Hi guys and welcome to Studio Wildlife. In this video I'm going to show you my process of painting an elephant. But this is more of a what to do if you're not happy with your painting or what to do if your painting is rubbish basically kind of video. Because this particular sketch took me so long to do and it was so difficult and just everything was going wrong with this painting. So basically this is going to be what I do and my thought process when something's not going right with one of my paintings and hopefully you can learn something and you can use some of the tips that I give you to help improve your artwork as well. So to start with, I was just blocking in, just using some acrylic paints, just using a flat brush, and just trying to block in a background shape. And it was actually here where it just started going really wrong. Um, the colours weren't blending properly, the colours weren't really drying, I tried to use the palette knife just to abstract things up a little bit, and it just sort of wasn't going to plan or it wasn't looking at how I wanted it to look, but I just thought I'd persevere. Then I just used a small round brush just to start sketching in the shape of this elephant. And what I was doing was using my phone as a reference. And one thing that I found difficult was that I didn't actually sort of crop my reference photo to the same crop as my canvas. And that made it really, really difficult for me to draw this out. So one of my big tips is if you're working from a screen or you're working from a photo, is to crop the photo or crop the image to the same scale and same proportions as the canvas or the wooden panel or the piece of paper that you're trying to draw or paint on. Because it just makes it so much easier when you're drawing out the lines and drawing out your subject and that was one of the things that I didn't do for this and it just made the whole thing really really difficult and it just kept on going really really wrong. The other thing that I found super difficult with this piece is that the paints didn't actually dry and I don't know what it was, I don't know whether it was the weather, I don't know where, whether it was the temperature, the humidity in the room where I was painting but it just didn't ever dry so I just kept on smudging this paint around and you can see here that I've actually just given up with the painting process altogether and just wanted to get rid of that sketch completely because I absolutely hated it and the proportions were awful so that's another thing that you can't be scared to do if you've put in no matter how much work that you've actually put in if that picture is not very good or you're not happy with it or the proportions aren't right or whatever it is don't get too attached to that work. Make sure that you are able to get rid of it all if you need to. So this drawing out process actually took me about an hour to do, which it should have really taken about 20 minutes maximum, but everything was just going wrong with this particular painting. Really, for the time that I wanted to put into it and what this piece was actually for, so just a sketch, just something fun to do, um, I probably should have just traced out the drawing it would have saved me so much time and it would have been a lot easier in the long run the tusks were something that i found really really difficult because i didn't have a very good reference photo for the tusks and they end up actually looking a little bit like sort of aladdin's boots so those like really curly boots with the bells on the end and that is not what elephants tusks look like um, so make sure you use a reference photo or at least understand the anatomy of the animal that you're trying to paint or the person that you're trying to paint rather than just trying to wing it because if you're going for like a realistic or a semi-realistic or even a recognisable structure you have to understand the shape and the form of that structure and I clearly didn't with these elephant's tusks. Once I'd got this sort of rough drawing done, I just used a little bit of raw umber paint and a filbert brush to start to block in some of the darker colours. But again, that paint didn't dry. So right from the get-go, this was just not working for me. And even though sort of at this stage and sort of a little bit further on in the video, the image that I actually produce I actually quite like I quite like how the acrylic paint hasn't quite dried and you can see some of that bare canvas showing through and the acrylic paint blends together and it almost looks like watercolors and if I was just producing a little sketch or just producing something to experiment with I could have actually left the painting 
at that stage. I'll, I'll tell you when that stage comes up in a second. But for the for like what I wanted, because the paints weren't drying very well, it just infuriated me, and I just hated how this piece was sort of starting to look. But I kind of persevered, and I started to bring in some sort of trying to bring in some lighter colours, but they ended up just going this muddy grey colour. And this muddy grey colour tends to happen quite a lot, or I see this muddy colour quite a lot when I see sort of beginners painting, whether it's in oils or whether it's acrylics. And it's when they use the same brush for too much or too long, or they start to mix the colours, or they don't change their water, all of the colours start to blend together, or even they don't leave the paints to dry for long enough, which is one of the issues that I was having, not leaving the paints to dry. And all the colours sort of blend together and become this same sort of muddy colour. And yeah, I think at that stage when you start getting that muddy colour and all your paints looking very similar, and all those colours looking very similar and it just not going to plan and the colours aren't going down as you like them, then you just have to stop and put your painting away to dry and leave it. I did not do that. I didn't leave it to dry. And that is one of the big issues that I faced when sort of going through the later stages of this painting process. So once I got that sort of rough blocking stage finished, which I actually really like how the picture looks here, and I kind of wish I'd left it at that stage, maybe just refined it a little bit more, but kept it as this loose wash of colour. I really like it. Um, one of the big issues with this painting was the composition as well. I really didn't think about the composition very much, and it just ruined the sort of piece. I think a better composition would be to zoom out a little bit and have a little bit more of the elephant's body showing through, but I really just wanted this quick sketch, and I just wanted sort of just the elephant's head, just it to be a portrait, but in hindsight, I should have maybe even tilted the canvas on its side, so it was landscape rather than portrait, and had more of the ears showing. But what I'm doing here is I'm just using a little bit of black paint mixed with a little bit of brown and a round brush, a soft round brush for this so I can get some fine lines or some thick lines and I just sort of draw around and refine that drawing a little bit more adding in some of these dark shapes but again the paint layer underneath isn't dry and when I'm working with acrylics or when anyone's working with acrylics it does really help to have the layers underneath completely dry before you start working over the top because what happens when you mix the water in with the paintbrush and you're thinning out your paints to be able to draw thin lines like this you just start to pick up the paint that's underneath that's already there because it hasn't dried properly and it just again it just starts getting muddy and unprofessional and not very pleasing to look at. So yeah, once I've sort of got this blocking stage done, I will then refine the lines and refine the darks and put in some of those shadows, just using a little bit of black mixed with brown. I have no objection to using pure black in paintings, but for this one I wanted it sort of the darks to be sort of brownie and not pure black. But if you were doing this and you just wanted to use pure black, that would be perfectly okay. So for the next part of the painting process, I did actually let it dry for a little bit. I could actually walk away from it long enough to allow it to dry. And I start by doing a little glaze over the surface just with some black paint. And I'm just using that flat brush again because I like to vary my brushes. I don't like to have just all the same marks in there. And again, I probably could have left the painting at this stage and just sort of refined those tusks a little bit or change the tusks completely because they are awful the ones that I've blocked in right now but I just persevered and I wanted this to have a few interesting colours so I didn't want it to be super realistic I wanted some nice bright colours in there and some nice sort of uh, contemporary colours so some like saturated yellows some pinks some blues I really wanted this to be almost like an abstract a fun picture rather than just a straightforward realistic elephant and for the wrinkles I'm not really sort of going into details I'm just painting these big block shapes so 
there are two routes you can go when painting an elephant. You can try and paint every individual wrinkle exactly as it is on the surface of the elephant. So using your reference photo, you can try and match that reference photo exactly. Or you can just sort of try to give the impression of these wrinkles and the impression of these details. And that's what I've done really. I'm just putting in these abstract shapes and marks, just mixing up the size and the direction and the shapes of them, and just trying to follow the form of this trunk. Rather than painting every individual wrinkle, I'm just trying to give the impression of these wrinkles and the impression of detail. It would have looked much better if I was going for a realistic piece if I'd painted every individual wrinkle and really, really studied the form of that elephant and studied the shapes of those wrinkles. But for this, for what it was, I didn't really need to pay too much attention to the wrinkles. Kind of looks like a little bit of a brain if you zoomed in on it. Um, but for what it is, that's all it needs to be. You're just trying to paint the impression of those wrinkles rather than each individual wrinkle. So after this, I decided I wanted to add some blue to it. I wanted a little bit of sort of a, I think it's not a cast shadow, but rim light, I believe it's called. And I wanted this almost like, if you imagine, sort of a neon-y effect. So I wanted that sort of blue on one side, and I was going to have a little bit of pink on the other, but I've not got around to that pink yet. But I just wanted that sort of rim light, that light, just to help me establish the shape and the structure of this elephant trunk and just trying to get the form sort of established using the light and that's one of the things I've found especially in my later pictures that getting the lighting right getting the shadows right will really really help more so than getting the colors correct or getting all the details if you can get that shape right you can get the lighting right and you can get the shadows right you are much closer to producing a realistic painting than spending hours and hours and hours and hours on getting all the details right. So as a beginner, one of my big tips would be to focus on the lighting and the shadows and the structures rather than getting into the details. I think you could build the details in later as you progress through your learning, but at the start, just focus on painting block shapes, block structures, just trying to get those values right, just trying to get those tones right, whether it's a light or a dark, and focus on those shadowy shapes rather than painting all the individual first rounds or painting all the individual wrinkles. Just focus on shapes and structures to begin with. For the background, I'm just using that flat brush again. I'm just trying to mix it up. I don't want a completely block colour. I'm just adding some sort of pinky colours, a little bit of blue and some black. Just washing it over slightly. But again, I would have liked to do a few layers of this. But the paint just wasn't drying. And I just was in a rush when painting it. I didn't take my time. And it just ended up looking a little bit amateurish and a little bit rubbish in my opinion. Um... So again, just take your time with your pictures, don't rush them, let each layer dry before you work over the top, because otherwise it just looks amateurish, you get these thin layers of paint that look streaky, they haven't blended properly, and it just ruins the whole effect of the piece. After I've got sort of this locking-y mess that I've got going here, I actually then started to use a small detail brush just to refine some of the wrinkles a little bit more. And it looks like I'm using pure white, but I'm not actually using white here. So another big tip there is don't use pure white paint in your paintings unless you're just saving it for the very, very final highlights. You want to save that white because obviously you can't get any whiter than pure white. So all I'm doing is using quite thin, watered down paint, just using that detail brush and just adding some smaller details on the left and the right side of that elephant. So in the left hand side where it's going to be in shadow, I'm just using a slightly greyer or darker colour than the right hand side. And that is another tip for people when you are doing these sort of shadowy areas that have some little bits of highlights in them. 
uh, where the light is actually catching them slightly. Um, you don't want those lights to be anywhere near the lights of your elephant. In fact, if you actually look at them, they want to be very dark. They want to be more towards your mid-tone to dark grey if you were to set it into a black and white. Um, but they want to be at your mid-tone to dark. Even though they look light because the surrounding paint around them is darker, you don't want those light areas in your shadows to be lighter than your lights, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Otherwise, it just sort of starts to look a little bit off. And a really, really good way of checking to see if your lights are correct and your colours are correct and your values are correct is by just taking a picture of your painting and then using your camera, just setting it to black and white. Because that really, really allows you to see whether some areas are too dark or some areas are too light without the colours coming into effect and without the colours changing your view because when you're looking at a painting your brain does a lot to sort of make it all fit and sometimes if you're not used to seeing those colours and actually thinking about the colours and the shadows and the highlights then it can get a little bit muddled up and you can get a little bit confused not intentionally but a little bit confused with your painting so by using your camera Converting it to black and white, it just simplifies it and it, you can really, really see the things that need changing. So at this point, I really, really did not like the colours that were going on to this picture. I, I just wasn't really feeling the colours, so I wanted to change it a little bit. And the best way to change it, I wanted to make it a bit darker, a bit earthier, a bit muddier. The best way to do that is with glazing. So wait until your painting is completely dry and then using just very, very watered down paint, so very, very thin paint, you can just brush it over the surface. If you put too much on, just get a little bit of water and spread it around the surface and that will remove it as well. But that just allows you to sort of change the shape a little bit. I also wasn't really, sorry, not change the shape, change the colour a little bit. I also wasn't really feeling the shape of the trunk. I didn't like it curving off to the left, so or to the right, actually, on this elephant. Um, but I didn't really like it curving off like that, so I wanted to change that a little bit. And again, this comes back to, if you're not liking a painting or you don't think it's very good, what can you change? What can you adjust? How can you change it? Don't get too attached to a painting. Right? Everything can be changed. That is one of the great things about working in acrylic paints or oil paints. It doesn't matter what you've put down, it can be changed really, really easily. Things like pastel or coloured pencil, once you've put something down, it's very, very difficult to actually remove it from that surface and alter it. Whereas with an acrylic painting or an oil painting, you just put more paint on and that will fix the problem. You've just got to be willing to sort of take that leap and actually paint over the surface of your picture and actually remove some of the essentially hard work that you've put in and that time and effort that you've put in needs to be erased basically. And it is hard to do that and it's something that I still struggle with. It's something that I get into the mentality of if I've put hundreds of hours into a painting and there's something I see that might be a little bit off or Amber will tell me there's something that's a little bit off. I'll actually weigh up whether I can actually be bothered to change it and I just have the approach of, ah, it'll be all right. But that is wrong. And as I'm developing as an artist, I'm actually seeing that the more time and effort I put into something, the more time and effort I'm willing to actually put in to make sure it looks right and make sure it looks perfect and make sure there's nothing about it that I don't like. And it's just that ability to actually persevere and push through and essentially the ability to realise that what you've actually created isn't irreplaceable, that you can always replace it and you can always improve it, that you need to develop as an artist. And I've only just started getting there. I'll be really honest, I still struggle with painting over things if they're not right, and I'm still struggling with working out what is wrong with a picture, but Amber is a massive help, and also 
if you don't have somebody else to look at it for you, you could always do things like hold up a mirror and look at it in a mirror. So seeing the flipped image can help you identify things that are wrong or things that aren't quite right. Um, there's also take a picture on your phone because taking a picture on your phone can also affect and also allows you to get sort of a, a bigger view, almost like stepping back from the picture. And then, of course, there is stepping back from the picture. So step a long distance away from that picture and just have a look at it with fresh eyes. You could also flip it upside down and just sort of really, really try and pick the things that aren't right or the things that you don't like about it and try and identify how you can change the painting to try and fix it and try and improve it so that you like it because at the end of the day don't try and paint for other people try and paint so that you like your picture if you're proud of your picture and you're proud of how it looks and there's nothing that you see that immediately jumps out of you that you're like oh i don't like that part or i don't like that part then you've succeeded in creating a painting but if there are things that you see that you don't like, then don't be afraid to get rid of them. Don't be afraid to change them. And that's a skill that you need to develop and learn. So again, for the next bit, you can see now it's much greyer. It looks much more like a sort of classical realistic elephant. I know it's not very realistic, but the colours are more closer, or more close to life. And what you'd see in real life and even though it looks like this on the screen now in real life you can actually still see some of those blues and some of those pinks showing through this layer of gray that I've put over the surface so you can actually see some of those more abstract colors colors that you wouldn't really expect to see on an elephant and I really like that and that is something that I'm actually trying to experiment with is the use of these colors that you wouldn't usually see and by adding these colours, I just think it adds a little bit more interest to the painting, a little bit more variation. And it's quite fun to see what colours you can actually add that don't detract from the painting itself, but rather improve that painting. So all I'm really doing is just using a small angled brush just to, again, just work lighter and lighter wrinkles over the top. But you can see I'm not really using a reference photo here. I'm not really f studying that reference photo very closely. And at this stage, that was a mistake. Because I'm still only really at the sort of modeling stage of the painting, because I'm still trying to build up that form and that structure, I should have been using my reference photo a little bit more. But I just made up the wrinkles on the trunk near the bottom. And it looks a little bit flat, in my opinion. I think the sort of top bit of the trunk just above the where the tusks would come out i think that looks a little bit rounder and has a little bit more form and that's where i looked at that reference photo a little bit more closely whereas the bottom of the trunk it just looks a little bit flat i've not really focused on the form or the structure very much and it's just lacking in any real detail or any real depth and i think it ruins this picture a little bit. So what I tried to then do was try to just establish a little bit more depth to the bottom of that trunk just by darkening some of those areas, adding some shadows and just trying to draw in some more of those wrinkles a little bit, trying to refine it and trying to just make it look a little bit more 3D. I don't know really if I'm successful. In fact, I'm definitely not successful. I'm actually looking at the finished painting now, and it doesn't look as 3D as the top of the trunk, but again, I just left it, which goes against everything that I was saying before, but it'll do for what this picture is. It's only a little sketch, so it doesn't really matter. But if I was going to then convert this into a bigger painting, a more realistic painting, or a painting that would sell for more money, be more expensive, I would spend a lot more time trying to refine everything and trying to essentially get every little piece, not necessarily perfect, but to a place where it looks 3D, it looks like it's got form, it looks like it's got structure, and it looks like it's got realistic wrinkles. I'm just then 
using some, again, not pure white, even though it looks like pure white, it's probably a little bit of white mixed with a little bit of blue, just to add in some highlights on the right side of the face. I'm essentially just sort of using it as a scratching tool and just almost putting these little scratchy marks on top of the wrinkles, just on the right hand edge of all of those wrinkles because I'm just trying to give the impression of light hitting some of those wrinkles and some of those bumps on that trunk. I'm not going in and painting all individual little dots, I'm not going in painting all the little sort of dimples of the skin of the elephant, I'm just creating these small abstract marks and abstract patterns just to give the impression of these wrinkles. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Um, for a painting of this size or for a painting of this style. Again, if you're going for realism, then a little bit more care should be taken with the wrinkles, but for the most part, for getting semi-realistic, sort of just the impression of these wrinkles, you can just be quite abstract with all of the marks that you make. I'm just starting to sort of refine it a little bit. I wasn't quite happy with the eyes, but I made it sure to put some eyelashes on those eyes, just trying to sort of make them pop a little bit. And the eyes are a little bit big, so I made them a little bit smaller. And then just tried to refine the edge of the face that little bit more, trying to pull it forwards from the ears so that the face was really, really pushed forwards and really, really sort of up close to the onlooker. I wanted to try and get this sense of sort of like this grand big elephant even though it's on such a small canvas I really wanted that face being pushed towards the viewer so once I had established this that I did let the paint dry and left it for about 30 minutes before coming back to it but I just then started to glaze over the surface some colors I'm just using a little bit of cobalt blue just for in these shadowy areas and then just refining the shape that little bit more and just putting some abstract marks with a sort of pink color that you can see that's going down almost like a pinky purple color I'm not sure exactly what color it was but just this pink so sort I of like bright sort of neon colour, trying to give it this neon glow, this blue, pink, neon glow over both sides of that elephant. Remember making sure to keep the left hand side a lot darker than the right hand side because the left hand side is in that shadow. Then I move on to the awful, awful tusks and I just... I don't really know what happened with these tusks. For one, I, I don't know what's going on here, but I decided to paint it coming off the side of the canvas. And then the other one, not off the side of the canvas. And compositionally, this looks awful. It, it just, I, I don't know what I was thinking here. So I, I tried to adjust it, but again, I tried to adjust it to match the one on the left, and now they look too similar, and the one on the right doesn't quite fit with the, tr the uh, trunk, or the, the, I don't know, the bits of skin where the tusks are held, uh, and I, I don't know, I just sort of don't know what I was thinking at this stage, but I persevered and I persisted which was very, very bad. I should have just called it here, quit, and left the painting as it was. I just essentially burnt it. I should have just chucked the painting away at this stage. But I persevered, and what I was left with were these little shoes on the end of my elephant's face. And all the missing is a tiny little bell on the tips, and they would have been perfect in Aladdin. But yeah, I just don't know what I was thinking here I was trying to rush the painting it was getting late and I wasn't using a reference photo I was just trying to sort of make up where I thought those tusks were going to go and obviously they look like tusks ish to an extent so I got this idea of what they look like but they just do not fit with that picture at all they do not match they do not look right and they've just completely ruined the painting that I have just been doing. 
and they just, yeah, they just look awful. Even when I start to refine them and make them look a little bit more 3D, which is what I'm doing here, just putting these like abstract scratchy marks in, using those abstract scratchy marks to build up the structure and the form. Even though they look round, even though they look 3D, they do not look right for that elephant. And they just, yeah, completely ruined the painting. So, to try and salvage it a little bit, I thought, I know, I'll add some abstract marks and some abstract splashes. So, just using my toothbrush and some watered-down paint, I just start to splatter some paint over the top of the painting, thinking that it would cover up some of the mistakes and cover up some of the things that I didn't like about the painting. So, I tried to focus primarily around the bottom of the trunk and the tusks, because I didn't like them at all. And... Yes, this does sort of, in my opinion, improve the painting, but only because it's covering up the things that I didn't like about it. It's not actually made the painting any better. I go through the same thought process. I think, I know, I'll add some abstract marks over the surface just to give some texture, a bit of 3D shape, just to try and detract from how awful the elephant actually is. And I add these marks... And they just start to completely detract away from the picture. And I need to remove them straight away. So just using a little bit of water, I can remove that without damaging the rest of the picture. And yeah, you can see some of Amber's hands in there as well. Amber is helping me just with the removal of some of these marks. Because obviously I've got my hands full with the paintbrush. She's then just wiping some of it away before it dries and ruins the picture. Even though it's an already ruined picture. It's not a very good picture. And then I sort of decide I know I'm finished at this point and I don't know what I was doing but I thought yeah this is it this is this is a painting this is finished this is good and then I just signed it and left it and yeah this is probably one of the worst pictures that I have ever done but I did something that is really, really important for beginners to start doing is I took it and I edited it. I looked at it and I thought these are the things that I could change. So I used a pastel pencil and I just drew around sort of where I think needed improvement. So I wanted to thin out the trunk a little bit. I wanted to change the tusks. I wanted to change the shape of the head and move the position of the eyes. And I just sort of got stuck in with painting over the work that I didn't like, painting over the things that I didn't like to try and improve this piece. And I think already, even though I've not established anything and we've got all these weird lines on there, it's already looking better because the tusks look better. It doesn't look as sort of out of proportion. It looks more like a real elephant, even though it doesn't look like a real elephant. It's got weird splashy starry ears, but it looks that little bit better because it's slightly more in proportion. And I'm just not afraid to get rid of the work that I've already done. I'm not afraid to paint over things that I don't like. And that's the big tip and the big thing that you need to learn as beginners. You've got to learn to identify the things that are wrong with your painting and you've got to be willing to change them. So you can see here that I've just moved the position of the eyes, repainting the eyes completely, adding those so sort of the darks first and then building up the layers of lighter wrinkles over the top. I'm just sort of completely changing the shape and the structure of the face just to suit my corrections. Suit the things that I didn't like about this picture and change it. I'm just using a soft filbert brush here to do this because I didn't want this piece to be super sharp and super detailed so I can get away with using slightly bigger brushes for the wrinkles and keep them quite soft and keep them quite sort of fuzzy rather than sharp and accurate. So you can just see I'm refining the shapes of those ears just using like greys, blues, building up those colours one on top of the other just trying to get it much better and give it more form and more life and just make it look generally better and improved paintings. Again, this painting is never going to be one of the best paintings I've ever done because it was only a small sketch. But it, I am much happier now that I 
came back to it after a couple of days, I drew on it and changed the things that I didn't like, and really, really edited this picture. It's almost like if you edit a painting on Photoshop or edit a picture on Photoshop where you use the liquify tool and you can smudge and push things around and change the proportions of things. Well, you're essentially doing that. You're doing that just with real paints. And a good thing to do, actually, that brings me onto a good tip, is you can actually use Photoshop. Take a picture of your painting, use Photoshop, see how you'd edit it on Photoshop or like any other digital editing app and see how you would change it and then compare it to your painting and then actually then do those corrections in real life like I'm doing here. So to sort of like finish this off, I just refine those tusks a little bit more. Just again, using those scratchy marks, the process is still the same. Just neaten it up with a little bit of black paint glazed over the surface. Just trying to get those shapes nice and clean because I do want the tusks to be quite sharp. And then I just start to glaze over some shadows just to try and establish that final, final little bit of form. And then again, because it's not an amazing picture. It's not absolutely perfect. I did want to add some of those abstract marks just to give it that little bit more interest and also cover up some of the sort of impurities on the painting. Some of the, the leather rendered bits or the less detailed bits or the bits that just were slightly out of proportion. And I just used a brush, a thick bristle brush, I didn't have access to the toothbrush because I left it at Amber's house and I just splattered some more sort of rough acrylic splatters in the blue and the pink because I really like those blue and those pink colours just over the surface of that painting a little bit more just trying to sort of abstract it up and add that little bit more interest to the piece. And then sort of thought at this point, oh, I, I'm finished with this painting. Um, it, it's much better than it was before. It's done. I can call it here. And yeah, I'm done with it. And I actually signed the picture. I don't know if you can see it on the bottom right hand corner. But then I thought, no, there's still some things that I don't quite like about it. And I held it up to a mirror and I decided to change some things and adjust the painting one more time. So I really wanted to make this abstract and I really wanted to sort of set the elephant apart from the background because it just got a little bit lost in the background. So I just decided to do this solid line of metallic silver paint around the surface and then that sort of looked good in certain angles but I also wanted it to look good in all angles so I decided to use just the small detail brush just to put this layer of white around as well. Ideally I would have done this in a paint pen that would have made it a bit more uniform but I didn't have access to a paint pen so I just did it with the paintbrush. Here's the finished picture. I did actually make a few more changes to the left eye. I sort of shrank it a little bit and I moved it closer to the right hand side of the elephant. So I moved it in a little bit further away from the edge and I do think that made a massive difference. But yeah, I, I'm relatively happy with this piece now and it's much better than when it was. In fact, I'll pop up a before and after from when I first thought it was finished to now and you can tell me which one you prefer in the comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, hope it was nice to watch and I hope you enjoyed and learned something while watching because that is the most important thing. I'm hoping you're actually learning things from these videos. Thank you so much and as always for more wildlife art tips head on over to studiowildlife.com. I'll see you next time.